Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow Industrials up about 392, NASDAQ up 155, S&P's up 49. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Let's go over to my man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time, Basil has an outstanding show. Check him out. He also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, the way you get the opening call, you come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under featured content. And in fact, our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, is going to be doing a subscriber webinar for his listener for his subscribers this is going to be on wednesday next wednesday the 21st it's hard to believe that a week from tomorrow is the 21st of august but it is he's going to be talking about what stocks could lead the market higher after this correction he's going to be using his chapman wave methodology basil is going to show the technical tools that have worked well in identifying market trends now the way this works folks just come over to our website at tfnn you're going to feature content you hit our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, you hit subscribe. Bottom line, you can get Basil's newsletter for one month for $128. You can get it for six months for $595, which is a discount of 22% or $173. You can get it for a year for $995, or a discount of 35%, which is $541. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and they're going to get you in the webinar. Basil does an amazing webinars. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing good, man. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. Well, we get action out here, man. Oh, have we got action? Just blink, and the next thing you know, 400 points up, 400 points down. Seriously. <laughs> you got to love it. What, what is interesting is if, you know, I always talk about these patterns. That's what I'm going to be talking about in the webinar as well, but I'm trying to put the whole package together. Let me just show this chart here. This shows in the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the lowest, most identifiable low bar, merely count each successively higher peak. I alphabetize them. First peak is A, then the next one's peak B, the next is peak C. And then at the fourth highest peak, peak D, other things can happen. It can go on to E, F, and G, but really, it's at this peak D that I always look to say, this is where you raise your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake, because other things can happen. And then the patterns I'm looking for is straight line. You can see here, straight line up or down, the arch formation, or the cup formation. And then when it's put together like this, this the, the pattern of straight down and an arch, I've got it in red because if it takes out the left side, you can go much lower. And on the right, if it takes out the right, the left side high, then it can go much higher. So it's the I H see. pattern okay. and the Y pattern. Yeah, right. And cool. it's, it's very clear, just trying to make it as simple as possible. And then there are other things that we're looking at. But right here, I showed subscribers to my opening call. Look, there's that H pattern that we were talking about. And pull right back and pull back to the 200 period exponential moving average. This is the orange line. 25, 850 is the area of support. And then suddenly you get the news. But what did it do? And I said this morning to subscribers to my opening call, I said, let's watch the... Um, Moving averages very closely. I'm not sure it'll even get there, but let's just look at the nine period moving average. This is this little red line here on the left side chart is the daily. I say that's the first uh, at about 26,285 to where we are right at the moment. And then there's an outside chance in the next couple of days. Maybe there's a move to the 14 period moving average of 26,429. In the blink of an eye, we went to 26,426, and now we're kind of pulling back. So one of the things about this webinar that I'm going to be doing, you know, I spent a little time. I hope this is the chart. Let me just pick this one out. I did, yes. So to make things as simple as possible, I use certain moving averages. I always say to, um, to whoever is asking about technical analysis, you know, what's, what, what do you do in technical analysis? Basically, what I always say is whatever technique you're using, just keep doing it consistently. Don't choose a, a nine period moving average this week and all of a sudden you say, oh, I think I need a five and oh, yeah, I need a five. Right. Just stick with what you're doing. You know, you've used volume for yeah. just forever and you just love volume. You use it, you understand it well. You know, you've got to keep it to, to what you feel comfortable with. So I was speaking about this particular, these two moving averages. In this case, it's the nine period moving average. It's the green line that changes to pink when it crosses over the 14 period moving average, the black line. And I'd said back when we had a sell signal the day before the, the last Dow high, that was in April, 
April 23rd, the high was 26,695. The day before, I had all the signals suggesting in my Chapman Wave methodology that there should be some kind of a reversal, even if there was a push to the upside. My thinking was that the moving averages were getting really close to some kind of a reverse a reversion to the mean or at least a pullback quite sharp. So it didn't, it occurred perfectly from the very next day, but there was a retest. It went underneath the old, that, that high, and then there was a pullback. It took seven sessions before these moving averages crossed negative. So we were very lucky because on the uh, June the 3rd, we managed to get the exact bottom. So we were already getting out of our, our uh, short positions and switched to, to the long side. And there's this doji candle, gave a perfect doji candle with a big gap up the following day. So the, the actual low of June the 30th is when we got in. And then it ran up. And then I started talking about the moving averages again were starting to give me signals. And I, I used these two little candles. To, look at this. You go to an all-time high and look at this tiny little doji candle. I, always, I have to relate. I'm very visual. So I relate it when you're throwing a ball up in the air. There's a moment when that ball is neither going up or going down. It is 0% gravity. And that's where it starts to change direction from up to down. But there's this fractional moment where it's actually standing still. That doji was the key, but it was the doji beforehand that really gave me the, the key to say, hey, let's let's sh uh, short the Dow if we can get to the uh, 26,009. Uh, let me tell you exactly what it was. The high was 27,398. And I said at 27,391. That's where we want to short it. So we got it within points of the all-time high. And then I started to say, don't be impatient because look how long it took us from that April sell signal before everything crossed negative. And look at this. It went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It was the 11th bar. It was actually the 12th bar where the technicals turned down. So I'm going to show some very simple tools, but I'm also going to be saying there are some sectors that are now piquing my interest that I hadn't looked at before that are starting to show some signs of support. So we're starting to prepare. I'm mean, actually already by tomorrow or the next day, we might even start putting on these positions in areas that have been really weak, but seem to be showing a little bit of strength here. And the other thing is that I want to talk about stocks that we missed on the way up, huge moves that just kept going. And every time you thought, should I buy it yet the top? And well, stocks that make all time highs tend to stay on the all time high list for quite a while. So those are stocks that have now pulled back sharply. I want to have a look at them. I'm going to be discussing them in detail. But something that also I thought I'd mention, I mentioned the REITs for a little while. I've been saying that the REITs, the IYR, is an area that gives you both, it gives you two things. It gives you a capital gain. And it gives you dividends. And I think that's what investors have been looking at. So the IYR is something that, you know, in my focus, we did have a position in a P PLD, which is a REIT, uh, Pro Prologis. And uh, we got out of that. But instead, I told you about two weeks ago that we bought um, CCI, which is Crown Castle. It's a tower REIT. And look, almost an all-time high today. you to love it. Listen, folks, you can get in Basil's webinar. Real easy to do. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to featured content. You hit the opening call. You are off to the races. Basil, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tom. You too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.